All right, guys, welcome back to The Real South Africa. We have a special encore presentation of a video that Phil Scott from the African Diaspora News Channel did on his channel, and we wanted to bring it to you guys since we were the company who hosted him and his crew and his subscribers here in sunny South Africa. Check it out, it's pretty good. Um, all I can say is, is that it was pretty interesting. We enjoyed it, so we thought it was worthy to bring it to our subscribers. So please enjoy. Hello everyone, this is uh, Mark Edward Blanton from The Real South Africa, as you guys probably already know. And thanks for watching this video. We hope that you subscribe. And of course like our channel and just basically let everybody know because this is a grassroots movement we're trying to get everybody involved want everybody to know and the best way to do this is that the algorithm sees that everyone likes our content and of course our channel and of course if you haven't subscribed go ahead and hit that button now so you can go ahead and subscribe to our channel now as you guys already know we are a luxury travel and tourism um, brand based here in Johannesburg, South Africa, uh, which has been a, a great situation for most people because they had the opportunity to come here, have everything sorted for those guys. They actually had a good time. They're actually like, wow, we, we over delivered in, in some ways and so forth, which leads me to my next topic. As you guys already know, for a couple of years now, we was trying to get the African Diaspora News Channel here to South Africa, obviously for a tour, and they brought everybody um, with them. Uh, which was great. We took care of all of the accommodations, all of the transportation, and so forth. So we really appreciate the fact that the African Diaspora News Channel chose the Real South Africa to take care of this monumental task for them. Um, it was actually their first time coming to South Africa, and so we wanted to make sure that we um, took care of them properly, make sure they saw all the stuff they needed to see, and so forth. So again, shout out to the African Diaspora News Channel for selecting the Real South Africa um, and of course you know we took care of their people while they were here and uh, it was it was just a wonderful thing and at some point we will soon obviously we will put up some content that we have from that as well. Um, keep in mind you can always go to the African Diaspora News Channel and subscribe to that channel as well because what we're going to do is do an encore presentation of a video that Phil Scott from the African Diaspora News Channel posted to his channel basically kind of going over his time here in South Africa we liked it a lot for a lot of reasons because it covered a lot of topics um, that we have covered but we kind of skimmed over it a little bit and of course Phil Scott with African Diaspora News Channel he um, you know he tells it like it is and that's one of the reasons why we were very excited to be able to partner with him and to bring his people and, and his crew here to South Africa um, they got a chance to go pretty much everywhere. Um, we took them to Soweto. We took them all throughout Johannesburg. And then, of course, they got an opportunity to go to Cape Town and so forth. So, obviously, we want you guys to watch the video and, and this encore presentation um, on our channel. And so, so obviously, check that. No, go ahead and check it out. Now, there was a few other topics that he covered as well. So, I just kind of wanted to, you know, kind of go over it and whatnot because some of Africa is a national channel here in South Africa. It covers everywhere. It's X amount of men. It hits X amount of households um, daily, or hourly. And it was good to have one of ours come on um, and speak on some of the topics that are, you know, you know, that are near and dear to our heart in the African diaspora um, community and so forth. So we was glad to be able to assist him and getting you no, know, and getting on that platform because everybody got a chance here to um, see him as well. Form is that the, uh, the 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 amount of views went up a lot when Phil came. So hopefully we can get him back on the channel as soon as possible. Now I wrote some stuff down, so I want to make sure that I cover some of these things. Um, of course, he talks he talks about people saying don't go to Africa. He covers it very well. Gives you a lot of reasons why people you know give these answers or saying don't go to Africa so I kind of want you to, to pay special attention to that and then he also talks about the people that are coming that don't look like us and so when he got here 
you know, Phil likes to tell it like it is and, you know, hey, it is what it is. So we want you guys to get an opportunity to, um, to see his response and so forth. He's very candid in this video and I think that you guys will enjoy it. I know that we did and so forth. And there's a couple more things that I want to um, want to talk about. Oh, also, you know, this is Phil's first time in South Africa. So we bought him to Joburg and from our experiences, most people fall in love with Joburg, especially coming from the U.S. Joburg is special, um, as you guys uh, may not know, um, but Phil talks about it in detail. I think you should check it out. Um, it's very interesting, um, you know, what he said, but I remember in a private conversation, he was like, man, I love Joe Berg. He was, he was thoroughly impressed um, with this part of South Africa. Very nice. Okay, and there was a couple more things. Um, you know, he, he covers, which I think is, is true, we do have a responsibility as black Americans. Um, and of course, you know, me being a black American, I feel like I do have a responsibility to my host nation. My host nation is South Africa. So I feel like I should, you know, um, expose uh, as many uh, African Americans to South Africa so they, so they can come see it for themselves. And kind of like Phil says, you know, just like him, he just needs to come see it. And now he feels comfortable with coming back. And of course, you know, he met somewhere else he can go with himself and his family and, 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 and so forth. So I figure we figure that you guys can do the same thing. So what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and let you guys check out the video. Please check it out. Make sure you leave comments. Make sure you, you know, of course, subscribe to our channel. But we need to start the conversation. We need to we need to put this thing together. We need to have, you know, those in the diaspora and those on the continent coming together um, for a lot of reasons. I think the biggest reason why uh, we don't come together is misinformation. So, but there are people on the ground, myself, and of course when Phil was here, um, that that can go out and report these things. And then all you people who come on trips, I, I know you guys do, you go back and you tell everybody, hey, this is what's going on. And those that are listening to those people, pay attention. And the reason why I say that because I've been in a, several situations where I, I've had a wonderful time, I've met people, uh, it was it was amazing and then I go back home and people are like yeah whatever 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 and you know I think you're missing out I think you should you know pay attention to what they're saying and, and of course what we're saying as well but you can always go to our website the real if you're interested in, in getting on your own trip uh, just go through the website you'll be able to basically get pricing if you want to put your deposit down you can and of course, you can always go ahead and book your trip there. We'll get it, and then we'll start working for you to get here, get you here to the real South Africa. So, check out the video. All right, all right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here. We are here. Um, thank you for joining us on our stream today. Um, as you see the title, let me check something real quick. Take me but a second. All right, all right. All right we sounding good. You know, I got to check my sound. Um, before people ask, so this particular shirt that I have on my person now, I was actually, um, uh, in Cape town. Kellen had told me about the presidential store. Those of you from South Africa know about the presidential store. Went over there. I said, man, I would really like to get something from over there. So they had one, one great sister. She wasn't even trying to sell me something. She was just nice. She said, Hey, look, you can check this out. I actually like this, the material. Um, it's real good because a lot of times people buy the cheaper ones and it, a lot of them is just had that hard material. You know, even if you wear a t-shirt, it's that old hard material and it isn't, you know, made with a certain kind of fabric. You could tell the difference. So I said, you know what, we're going to do our South Africa stream, what I bought in South Africa. So shout out to the presidential store. Um, even you will find that store I saw in the, um, Johannesburg airport. I seen that store as well. Um, so you know, even if you don't have a chance to go to somewhere else, you can get some stuff from there. Nice material. So, um, thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining us and go ahead and make sure to give you a hand clap uh, for that, uh, for joining us today. You didn't have to join us, but you did. So I want to thank you for that. Um, I have a lot of things to cover here. I made sure to write these things down so I don't forget anything. Um, but coming back from South Africa, back into Babylon, you know, I've been kind of dealing with these things here and I did podcasts. We also talked about Mason, Tennessee, um, on our, the black congregation channel. 
So go over there. You can hear that. Um, but today we're going to be talking about South Africa and the things that I kind of seen while I was there. I do feel refreshed. I'm not going to lie. I feel refreshed. I don't feel drained. Um, I don't, you know, feel all the stress that, that, you know, Babylon brings. And when I mean Babylon, I'm talking about the whole Western system. I'm not just talking about America because even when I landed in Paris, France, people had the same look, the same mode. I know that look when you see it, that old down mode that I'm just so busy. I'm working so much and I don't make enough money. It's just that mode. Even the same thing when I, we had landed in Amsterdam, same thing. It's just the whole Western system. It's just so toxic, uh, period. And I, beyond which, I, what I've noticed, it's toxic for everybody. Cause you got white folks that look got the same look on their face too. But we want to definitely, you know, make sure before we get started, I got a list here I want to cover. So we want to thank, first of all, the real South Africa, Mark and Dr. Latasha Blanton. Um, they had put together a good tour. Um, I was impressed with the accommodations. Um, I, I was asking the subscribers when I was there about it. You know, they said that things were great. The accommodations were great. And like I told uh, Mark at the time, if I had a bunch of complaints that I feel was substantiated, it would be the last time I told him that. And we didn't get that, uh, whatsoever. So, you know, shout out to them, uh, for putting, you know, uh, this tour together for being professional with everything and even how they took care of us, you know, with the accommodations, you know, I was there to work. I'm never a part. I'm never there to be a part of a tour. I'm just gonna be on with you. I mean, I definitely would come in and say, Hey, what's going on? But I'm usually I'm having to do something. So when you see me and Sharif and Kellen, rolling together is not to be vacationing is to get to work. So I did take care of a lot of work while I was there from sun up to sun down. I was working. I was tired. I'm telling you, I, that's why when y'all tell me about certain stories, I didn't have time to film anything. Maybe I can do a little live stream here and there, but I just did not have the time whatsoever. So definitely, definitely. Once again, thank y'all, um, for joining us for sure. And thank you to the real South Africa. Now, uh, one thing, I don't know if you, some of you saw it or not, but I purposely didn't post it to my channel as of yet. Um, I was actually on newsroom Africa while I was out there and I will show you, uh, that was national TV in South Africa. Now I've never really been on national TV in my own country. And for sure, I haven't had any black networks that would say, Hey, let's put brother Phil on to talk about a few things. You know, it's sad that, you know, I had to go to South Africa to actually get some love like that. But when in my own home country, you know, everybody say that I'm the type of toxic person. They don't want to be around. I don't make massa happy. So, you know, but the Bible teach a prophet is without honor is in all in his own hometown. So, Hey, I would definitely take that love from South Africa and that appreciation from South Africa all day long. Uh, you know, I've seen some people say, man, brother Phil look like he getting too comfortable out there. We may lose him. <laughs> I was very comfortable. Um, I definitely want to thank the subscribers for sure for taking up the time and not listening to the naysayers that could be maybe in your family. It could be friends and people on social media is trying to tell you, don't go to Africa. Why you want to go over there? And I, all them kind of people use it. They are not going to go nowhere, no way. So they don't want you to go no way either. They secretly don't want you to go away from them because they're afraid that you may leave them behind and they be stuck in a situation. You're not here with them because if they really didn't care about quote unquote Africa like that, why are you always coming in conversations that has to do with Africa? Why you don't believe in that and you believe that everything you want to do here is in America. Well, why are you in the conversation? I, I don't understand that. I don't go in conversations where I feel like I'm not invested into, or I don't want to be a part of. I'm not going to leave comments to people about why you want to do this. Hey, I don't want to do that. Okay. That's you brother. That's you sister. Do you, but I know you haven't been because the way you're talking, that's how I know. Um, you listening to the white propaganda about the African continent. I know that based on some things that are being said, right? I know. So I feel that my job is to get you there, not to tell you do nothing else, but just go one time. And I believe you will make your own decision, right? So I talked to the subscribers and I asked them, 
What do you think about it? You know, is this a place you want to come back to? And all of them that I talked to said that they want to come back. They couldn't get enough of it. They was happy. It was peaceful. It was great to see majority black people. That was great. Definitely in Johannesburg. Like, listen, shout out to Johannesburg. I fell in love with Johannesburg. Oh man. It was just so many different things in Johannesburg that I saw. It would be good just for my, me personally, my family, and also me and my wife's businesses. I, it's just like, it would easily for us to get plugged in there. So I just fell in love with it. That that's for sure. Um, you know, we also went to Cape town as well. Uh, let me see, get to some pictures here. I want to show y'all, uh, while we up on the screen here, where we at, where we at, where we at, um, Let's see, Cape Town. Yes, you know, I, I was in Cape Town here. Uh, you know, your brother taking the pic, taking the picture out there in Cape Town. That that was very nice. And I, I, I'll get I'll get to that. Uh, while I was in Cape Town, <laughs> I went to a convenience store. And I think if y'all follow me on Instagram, y'all probably know this. When I'm about to post here, I had some some chips called Spookies. Now, of course, some American folks like what? That's something that name Spookies. I found out that's something that's over there. They, they grew up eating that. I was told that well, that's a poor man's chip. I said, shoot, well, that's the chip I need. <laughs> man, he, I look, I ate these spookies and I like where the hell the rest of them at? I was looking, I went to pick and pay before I left trying to find some spookies. And I'm like, man, I had to go somewhere else. Now people in South Africa know what spookies is. You know, I made sure to follow them. I say, look, how can I get some more spookies? These things are good, <laughs> but they were not full of salt. Like over here, everything is full of salt, man. It's amazing. Like, especially a lot of black folks with high blood pressure. You can't be eating the, those uh, potato chips here because they just put so much salt in the crap. But over there, you eat it, you ain't taste no salt in it. So that was, that was a beautiful thing for me. So shout out uh, to the chip called Spookies. Uh, oh, you ate them a uh, great black shark. Okay. You, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they good. All right. So let me get to, you know, some other things that I wanted to, uh, talk about here. Uh, we had our, I'm looking at my screen here. We, we, you know, landed, uh, over in Johannesburg. Uh, we went from Johannesburg. Um, we, you can go as an American citizen, uh, to South Africa visa free for 90 days. Okay. You don't have to go through the process of visa on arrival or anything. So, you know, when I went to Ethiopia, they did visa on arrival. When I went to Kenya, they did visa on arrival. Um, but South Africa, no visa. All you need is stamp your passport. Welcome to South Africa. Um, they had a requirement of a PCR, a negative PCR test, uh, to get in. It wasn't a, uh, jab requirement at all. Because people will ask that question, I know. I mean, I get it. I know. And then from there, we went to you know our hotel. When we went to the hotel, everybody was, was extremely nice, definitely nice, uh, with the brothers and sisters. Now, a few things that during the trip, you know, that was discussed with me. We in Black America are hella respected on the African continent as a group, and. I was told several times while there that, you know, y'all are the voice. You know, when y'all speak, everyone listens. Matter of fact, y'all are big brothers, y'all are big sisters. We look up to y'all. And I didn't take that as, oh, take that in as arrogance, but I, I took it as we have a responsibility as black Americans and we're wearing the crown and that crown is heavy. And this is why we're attacked so much. Is because we're wearing that crown. I told y'all many times before, just even in America, we are the leader of culture in America. Nothing gets done without us. Why you think every movement got to pattern themselves after us or they want to get our cosign? And if we don't, if they don't get our cosign, notice things don't work. Matter of fact, there are people that's jealous of us in the other groups in this actual country because we don't speak up for them or when something happened to them, they don't get the traction and they're like, why everybody care about black people so much, but they don't care about us. Well, go out there and put in the work that black people put in. Speak up. Be willing to uh, 
get roughed up. Be willing to go to jail. Be willing to get killed. And a lot of you that come in this country are not willing to do that for freedom. But we have no choice but to do that. So a lot of people on the continent are looking to us about movements. Now what's happening because we're speaking about reparations. Did you hear about Jamaica? Now Jamaica wants to remove the queen as head of state like Barbados. And now they're telling the British government, hey, we need reparations for slavery. You understand what I'm saying? Like we are spreading that reparations message throughout the diaspora and it's getting to where it needs to get to. They told me that time and time again, we look up to y'all. And unfortunately, this is the bad thing that I'm seeing too. Because of we being looked up to, some of the negativity that we participate in is getting on that continent too. So some, some people that talk about what well, some of the women are doing that you don't like, unfortunately, that's getting on the continent too. Some things these brothers are doing that you don't like, unfortunately, that's getting on the continent too. I don't like that part of it. I personally don't. But aside from that, it is like I said, is we are, you know, the vanguard. So we should, you know, what we say matters in the diaspora, that's for sure. And we need to make sure that because we are the vanguard and that the crown has been placed on us as black Americans is that we try to make sure that we try to make, you know, navigate and make sure things are just right because we want to make sure to lead in the right manner. That's, you know, that's one thing that was told. Um, I had another conversation with a brother that he was talking about what some people say, I don't know why Africans uh, and African Americans or black Americans, why people say Africans don't like them. We had that conversation and he said, I don't have no issue with black Americans. I want them to come. He said, I keep telling them all the time, come. I don't know where that comes from. And I explained to the brother, it's not here on the continent, brother, the one I was talking to. I was saying that what it is, is that the white supremacist, his job and the way he runs his world is division. So he has to divide everybody, even the black world. So when he allows black immigrants to come over here, he wants to make sure no matter where they come from, Hey, don't go by them black Americans. Don't be like them because he don't want no black immigrant to come join us because that would be a problem from the rip for him is that you have black immigrants come in and now they on code with us. So he's going to do everything he can to be the devil that he is. Oh, you're better than them. You're more educated. Oh, you don't want, you won't act like them. But when you do the research, the same things that's going on in black America is going on in their homelands too. But the, but it's, it's, the devil is, is used to deceive. And as long as he can deceive our brothers and sisters that come in here to make them think a certain way, right? Now, I was explaining that certain cultures is different. Black American culture is different than African culture. So that makes us all different. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like one sister that I was talking to, um, Sister Davina, and shout out to her. I did an interview with her. You'll probably see it later on. Uh, when the videos get edited that, you know, in some African cultures, when dad gets home, what is explained to me, kids aren't supposed to bother the dad whatsoever. Food is supposed to be on the table. You understand what I'm saying? Um, men are supposed to be doing a whole lot of things. Now in black American culture, you know, men can come home from work and say, Hey kids or whatever. Some men, you know, like to cook barbecue, whatever. Well, in some cultures, they look at that as what the hell men cooking for men are supposed to cook men are supposed to be served all the time. Now some brothers probably be in the chat like, yeah, that's perfect. You know, or whatever. But you know, way we was raised, we all, you know, if men want to cook, they can. But so some people believe that, well, I don't want my son to be acting like that. Thinking that's so, but, but you know, that's cultural. That's what they want to do beyond with you. A lot of young people on the continent is kind of tired of that old school culture deal. Just from what I'm seeing, they want to be in the 21st century. And because of some of that, it, it is the negative side of it is, you know, some people still want to be on the slap a whole tribe. Then they, they can slap up a woman, beat up a woman, whatever. In our community, we know that's just a no, no. And if you touch one of ours and our family, you, we got to handle that. It don't matter if you providing anything. You don't supposed to put your hands on no woman, bro. It just no. That's, listen, I have I have 
in my life have never put my hands on any woman I've ever dealt with because I understand men's power is just to walk away and say, look, I'm not dealing with you. I I'm just going to leave. I ain't got to hit you. Even with your children, you don't even have to hit your children like that. If you're a man that walks in your masculinity and walks in that power, they will respect your word. And if you got a woman that's just yin, 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 all the time, then you need to assess that situation and say, I don't need to be with you because you're not on this program that I'm on to try to build something. All you're going to do is tear it up, but you don't have to put a hand on women. Like I seen a, a big sign they had all over South Africa talking about, you know, ending gender based violence. And he was talking about basically the domestic violence thing. Now I spoke to one brother that was a police officer and he said, Oh yeah, it, it's going on. But you know, some of the women, you know, maybe just drop the charges or whatever. So I'm never going to be cool with beating on the women. That's not cool. I got daughters. I wouldn't want not a now man to put his hand on my daughters. I got a sister, you know, I got a mom, I got, you know, a bunch of family, right? I wouldn't want nobody to put their hands on any of my family members. So if you are the type of dude that's doing that, stop. That's not, that's not cool at all. And listen, these women today, you know, even in South Africa, you know, they can have guns and may, they may put you down for beating them like this. So stop. Okay. Um, aside from that, white people always have told you to be careful about going over this place. Oh, don't go to places like Soweto. Oh man. If you go to places like Soweto, I, something may happen to you. That's a township. Guess what I saw when I was in Soweto? Guess who I saw in Soweto? The ones they told y'all, it's so dangerous. Be careful in there. I seen white people. I seen white people walking around having a good time. I seen white people on their bikes riding all in Soweto. But they'll tell you, it's all that crime in Soweto. Man, don't you go to South Africa. Ooh, something gonna happen to you. You gonna get stabbed, you gonna get shot. Man, you get stabbed and shot in Houston a whole lot quicker than over there. Every time I look up on the news app, somebody getting shot here in Houston. Somebody getting stabbed. Somebody getting beat up. While I was in uh, uh, Johannesburg, right here in Sugar Land, you had a, a, a father Take it, trying to take his daughter to school and somebody ran up on them and tied them up and robbed them in their house. Every freaking day is some sort of crime going on in the United States. Man, you better be careful out there. Oh boy, that crime. Crime is everywhere. But don't act so brand new like we, we, we live in the United States and oh boy, there's no crime over here. This is the most violent country on the planet Earth. They got a gun for everybody. If you want it, that's violence. All this road, every day is road rage. Every day. You got scammers, scamming again, skimming your credit card at the gas pump. People stealing gas. I wasn't hearing that over there. Then now you got Jim Crow Joe just come out saying, hey, you know, um, there's going to be some food shortages. What? Food shortages? I know y'all seen that the other day. Thank you, uh, Brother William, for the love offering. I'm trying to just continue this on. I'm acknowledging the love offerings that I see. Uh, Dorothy Branch, thank you for the uh, super sticker. Appreciate you. So Jim Crow Joe saying it's going to be a food shortage. I ain't heard that not one time when I was in South Africa. Like, boy, they about to have some food shortages. Y'all better get ready. But yeah, they talking about food shortages over here because they all intertwined in the situation with Russia because Russia ships the most wheat in the West than any other country. And since they cut Russia off, now they about to cut themselves, basically. So you talking about food shortages. Now, the now person in South Africa told me about a food shortage. Y'all need to stop listening to these folks about your own people, no matter if they're here, over there, whatever. If you want to find out about your people, then you sit up there and go talk to other black people that live there and say, hey, what's going on over there? It's one of three answers you're going to get about black people. Either, man, it's cool over here, or no, nah, don't go over there, or you could come over here, but you need to check in. It's usually about the three answers. Now, if you don't check in, people may roll up on you right here in the United States. They'll roll up on you in certain neighborhoods and say, hey, bro, who are you supposed to be? Who do you know out here? You know, you got to check in. I don't have no problem checking in. Know where I go. If I got to check in with this one, I check in. It is what it is. That's what I got to do. 
But these people have lied to you constantly about everything. You know, let me put some pictures up that, that I have here. Just give me a second here. This, this is me right here with, with, with our brother in Soweto. I was getting nothing but love in Soweto. Nothing but love. But this is the same Soweto that you was told to stay away from because it was so scary. It was so scary. And then let me tell you something else about, about these, about these white supremacists. Then let me, let me tell you something else. Um, hold on. There's something else that I need to show y'all. I don't know if I have it up. Oh, another thing. Soweto. All right. Right there on the screen at the, at the, the entrance of Soweto, right? The same place to tell y'all to stay, but on the right, it's in the mall of Africa. When I see big advertisement like that on the right hand side, what you see in the mall of Africa, everywhere we go in America, it's just white, 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 white. It's like black folks don't even live here. How much they, they advertise white in this country, right? This country is very diverse and they don't, they make sure it's white everything. Well, it was beautiful just to see black folk. And look, look at the picture of this sister. It's not a bunch of weave. It's not, looking your hair pink and green and looking some cockamamie hair. It's this sister with her natural hair on this, uh, 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 uh advertising right here in the mall of Africa. Thank you. Uh, Darren Lee for becoming a member. That's something you really don't see all the time in America. Right. And it wasn't the only time I seen that I seen that over and over and over and over again. Now, when I went to Cape Town, Cape Town itself, you know, for me, beautiful. Cape Town was beautiful. It was, the weather was nice. It was warm, beautiful mountains, beaches. I posted some videos from Cape Town. Some places in Cape Town for me, because I've been to Laguna Beach before. If those of you have been to Laguna Beach, California, uh, when you see them houses up the mountains and everything in Laguna Beach, it looked like that to me it, when you go to Laguna beach and in, in some parts, it looks like Laguna beach with a kind of blend of Miami. It was, it was interesting to see that look, right? And would you ride along the mountains? And once again, white folks living their best life in Cape town, they having a good time. They running, they jogging, they got their dog. They doing everything that they do in South Africa. While we got Negroes over here arguing about why they don't want to go to Africa and white folks, they there. Now I will say I did see a little bit more white folks in Cape town than I did in Johannesburg. That's the truth. That is the honest truth, but they're still not the majority. I will say that much. And I'll get to some of the politics a little later cause I have to break down everything, but I'm just building my case up here. So in Cape town, like I said, table mountain, you know, was definitely pretty cool. We went up there, look, car cable all the way up to table mountain, got to the top. You can really see the whole Cape town from above. Um, the sun definitely hits different up there on the top. That's for sure. Um, but in the midst of all of that, it's some things that I was realizing while I was there first and foremost, every time I'm on the continent, I'm always at peace the fruit I was eating. Oh my God, that fruit was so sweet. I said, what are y'all doing to this fruit? The fruit was so good. Everything, just the food is just, oh my God, the food is good. The air, you don't smell them chemicals and all the things that these people in America put in the air. It is, it is criminal what they do to the American people. All the stuff they release into the air. It is criminal what the FDA approves for black people and all people, not just black people to eat. I brought back some hot chocolate from South Africa and it had real ingredients like sugar, not high fructose corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup has been the biggest cause of obesity in this country ever since they used it because they wanted to be cheap and not get sugar, real sugar. You know, you have this many ingredients on the package. In America, it looks like a freaking dissertation. What's in your food? And you wonder why everybody's getting sick with heart disease and diabetes and cancer and all that. It's the freaking food. They feeding us crap. 
Now, Brother Sharif, on top of Table Mountain, told, told me he was ear hustling what white people were saying, and white people were saying it's the best food ever in, in, in South Africa, or just even the continent in general. They was even talking about the food. White folks even know that the West is going down. That's why they're making some moves they're making. It is so criminal what they do to us in this country. They put the worst of the worst in your food, get you sick, then you go to the pharmaceutical companies, get their quote unquote medicines to heal you, and it don't heal you. It just stabilizes you. Then with Pfizer, what that company, just come out saying, oh, well, some of my blood pressure medication is causing cancer. Well, if you wouldn't put all the freaking salt in people's food, you don't supposed to be putting that much salt in nobody's food. Maybe people wouldn't have their high blood pressure spiking up so high constantly. And then you're using table salt, the worst salt ever when you're supposed to be using sea salt. When I did the research, look at the, look at the cancer rates in the West. Then look at the cancer rates on the African continent. Look at the obesity rate. Look at everything that we deal with here in America in the area about health, then go research it on the continent. Do it yourself. You're going to see, wow, they don't have those health issues as much as we do here or in the volume that we have. Let me say the volume that we have, but it's supposed to be third world, right? How is it that we're more, we were sicker here, but they're third world that according, according to what these white supremacists like to say. The accommodations that we stayed at, great service, great service. I can't complain about the service. Brothers and sisters were smiling, you know, uh, uh, talking to you. Hey, man, where you from? And they just get, you know, talking to you, man. You tell them where you're from. Oh, yeah, I'm from Houston. Oh, man. You know, they start having conversations with you. They love to talk with you. I keep telling y'all, go see it yourself. Go to an African country yourself. Now, I said this in the live stream when I made it in Johannesburg. I will say this and I will continue to say this because I know my people. I believe South Africa would be the best country for all black Americans to visit first. The reason why some people don't do well with a big culture shock. Now, I had some people say, well, shoot. You know, if you don't want culture shock, would you listen, you go do what you got to do. I just know the majority of my people, they don't even leave their neighborhood. A lot of them, they don't leave their state. Then you tell them to go to a whole country and just have a big thing. Listen, I dealt with culture shock in Ethiopia and it took me like a Kellen had to calm me down a little bit because I was tripping out about how they move. I said, man, look, why they move like that? They don't, they so slow. They did it. You know, I was just like, what's going on? We set a time and I expect things done at a certain time. He said, you got to calm down. This is not America. Now, some people wouldn't like it that much and say, I don't want to come back. But, it, but once I got over that, it was a great experience in Ethiopia. But South Africa, for me, soon as I got there, got on the road, not to say I'm a big proponent of McDonald's. I don't even like that place. But you see McDonald's, you see KFC, you see things that you normally see. You see the, the infrastructure is no different than your American cities. You know, you could easily get plugged in. You know, when I asked about even people that want to rent an apartment, you know, in West Africa, for sure, the people want one year's rent. Now, a lot of Americans just don't have one year's rent. They can save the money, but they just don't have it. In South Africa, when I spoke to Sister Asha, and shout, shout out to her, you pay your deposit, you pay your monthly payment. No different than here. Non-citizens could have bank accounts in South Africa. You could work to get your residency. You can work to get a citizenship. If you bring in business into South Africa. Now, some of you sisters, let me think about you. Some of you sisters that's doing braiding hair. Y'all better get y'all behind the Johannesburg. I seen some styles that flip that trip me out over there. Y'all better go over there and get those skills and learn how those, how those sisters doing the hair over there because y'all would really, really, really over here. Yeah. You would stand out if you learn how to do those, those styles that they're doing there. 
So I, I, I would say that any of you that, that that's doing well in business here, I would say you can go over there and get plugged in pretty good. That's, that's what I can say. Um, let me get to white people. A lot of people will say, well, I don't want to go to South Africa because they got white people. You have more white people in America than you do over there. I'm just keep it real. Way more white people. So I think you the last person to be talking about white people. Now I'm going to say that you came from Nigeria saying that I would get it. But living here, everything is white, 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 white. Your teacher white, the police white, the judge, the DA white. Nine times out of 10, the president, well, all the presidents have been white minus one. Senate is mostly white. Uh, the House of Representatives is white. <laughs> Supreme Court, mostly white. Everything that's controlling it, the bankers are white. Everybody white. So why are you saying that? When black people are the majority. So I, I don't know why you say, I think that's just really a BS excuse. It's an excuse you're telling yourself, but white people, I'm telling y'all, they coming. They're coming, they're coming, they're coming. And while y'all arguing with each other about not going to the African continent, they're coming to rent those apartments. They're coming to open businesses. They're touring, vacationing. I went to a restaurant called gold in Cape town, South Africa, that restaurant, the concept of that restaurant was, was pretty awesome. They gave you a 14 course meal of different foods from, you know, different African, uh, cultures. And they gave you dessert and everything at the end where it's like a live show that you get while you're there. Now I want to play a quick clip of kind of like what you will see while you're there. But I, but I want, it's a reason I want to go into that. Let me see. Where is, let me, let me get to that. Uh, did I upload that? Maybe I did not. I'll do it right now. Just give me a second. We doing this live video file. Okay. No, I didn't do that. Okay. All right, let me start it off from the beginning. So this, this is, I was sitting there in this restaurant called Gold, very, very nice place, and they have live performances, so I want you to just kind of see it. Let me pause it right there. So if you see there's, there's two white uh, couples, the white couple that's actually in front that you see on the screen is from America. The moment we walked in, they, you know, spoke, they spoke and you say, Oh, I know they were from America. So ask them where they were from. And that's, that's a husband, that's a wife and that's their son right there enjoying themselves in, in Africa. But yet you got black folks on social media arguing about they, they don't want to go to Africa, X, Y, Z. Okay. People was nice. Met another, um, some other white people that was there. Uh, V Hannah, thank you. Say pre being investor that you are many blessings. All right. Appreciate you. There was many other white people. Uh, there was there one said it was from Seattle, Washington. 
They was there for a wedding in Cape Town. Oh, they left way from Seattle to go over there to South Africa. But yet we're arguing saying I'm not African. Okay. All right. Well, white folks aren't African either. And yet they're going. So in that same gold restaurant, I start, I start panning the room. I started panning the whole room. I said, let me, let me really look and see who's in here. Cause I kind of, we kind of came before everybody, but we started to look at everybody that was in here. So let me, let me get, let me get, is this a picture? Okay. This, this, this picture right here that, that's on my screen, that's me looking from the bottom. And you see, the, it's, it's all white people sitting there. So I'm, I'm sitting here thinking as a black man, I am. And I remember a sister I met from Atlanta, uh, shout out to sister Brittany from Atlanta. If you watched this video, good sister, she said the same thing. Look who all on this plane, look who all coming over here. And then people like me and you, we just kind of sprinkled in what's up with that. They're over there enjoying themselves while we're not coming. Now, let me show y'all how they're really enjoying themselves. Give, give me a minute. Hold on. Let, let me, hold on. That's not what I need to do. Drop that. I want y'all to really see. Now, in that restaurant, they say if you want to go up and have a good time with them, you want to dance and all of that, you can. I recorded it. I recorded it. And I said, let me record this because I want to, when I go back to, to, to us, I want to show black folk this video that I'm about to show you. And I want you to see how many black folks outside of the workers do you spot in this video? Just give me a second. Let me, let me load this up. All right. So yeah, that's video that I recorded just being there watching. So then I got to thinking for a minute as I was just sitting here watching this scene constantly. I was by myself, Kellen and Sharif went somewhere else. And I was told how the Chinese, the Chinese love coming into South Africa. They got a whole China mall over there. And they say the Chinese come in a block, a lot of them. They say they come about a hundred of them at a time. They all own some group economics. Then I hear in these comment sections, why in the world are them white folks going over there? Why them Chinese? Why them Arabs? Why da, 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 da? You always talk about like, why are they over there? But yet you're not going. How are you going to complain about them and you're not going? Do you realize that I was told that if a black American's attached to something, they get things done a lot faster with even us just attached to it. They rather do business with you and me. They rather you and me bring businesses over whatever you're doing in America. Like even Akon said it, you can go do it in, in, in Africa, South Africa, wherever you want to go. If you can make it in America, you could easily make it over there. You already have the skills and the skill set that's needed to do it. But I'm at a point now, I don't want to hear no more people complaining about white folks in Africa, Chinese in Africa. Now they doing something discriminatory. Yes. We're going to talk about it. But if you're not going and you're not trying to go, then I heard excuses when I say, well, why you ain't going? Well, it's too expensive. You know, I say, oh, so you rather go to Mexico? 
with a freaking cartel is running around. You don't tell about them stories about the cartel, how that sometimes tourists are getting killed by the cartel. You ain't got no cartel running around South Africa like that. I'm not saying crime don't happen, but they ain't had the cartel where the cartel runs the whole country. That's not going on. Y'all going down to freaking Mexico where is, is the cartel, you know, after you're behind, you know, the cartel will chop, chop somebody up. They chop the, the arms off, the legs off, the head off, put in the wheelbarrow and go put in the front lawn. This is what they're doing in their own country. Why do you think some of them people running up here? And you, and you going over there. They running up here. You running over there. Well, it's cheap, you know. The flight is only $318. I can go in your closet and find economy tickets to go to African countries all day long. I know you. Because one thing I know about black people, you're going to have some clothes. You gonna have some shoes. It's too expensive. You didn't say that by, by the, the, those Birkin bag you bought. You didn't say that by the, the every pair of Jordans that you went and bought that came out. The same shoes that was out when I was a kid, when Jordan actually was playing, just, they just put new colors on them of the same shoes. And you, and you got every pair. But it's too expensive to go to. How, how is it that white folks from the U.S. they even go? White people got money. White folks ain't got. White folks living paycheck to paycheck too. The only thing that white folks got over you is social currency. And what I mean by social currency is the gift of whiteness in America. They live in paycheck to paycheck just like you. A lot of them. And they take their money and they want to go to South Africa, wherever they choosing to go. It is not a time for excuses anymore about the African continent. You can make excuses, but don't get mad when you finally decide to go and you got all these different groups of people buying up property, starting businesses. Then you want to get mad. Why are they over here? Well, and the question has been, why haven't you been coming over here? Why haven't you been saying, let me make my mark here. White folks know the West is going down. They know it. White folks are looking for a way out of the West too right now. They see it's going down and then what they want to run to, they want to run to the continent of Africa. I'm in Johannesburg and the driver is pointing out to me, Hey, you see that right there in the distance, you see that how that dust, that uh, dirt is so yellow. There's gold that was in there. They still got gold in there right now. It's just not the highest quality gold, but if they want to get it, they can. What, what hill we got in America right now that's yellow cause it's full of gold. Even recently, America's general AFRICOM talked about how important the African continent is for the security and, and stabilization of America. Everybody knows that. The Chinese know it. The Russians, everybody know it. And, and on the ground, people are saying, brother and sister, we want to, to connect with you. I understand we built America. Listen, we built the freaking world. We're indigenous to the planet. Every place in, on the earth we have been. But what I'm telling you from what I'm seeing is that you better get a stake in Africa and you better get one ASAP. Because when, when later when you finally decide to, then you're going to complain that it's gotten too expensive. It's hard for you. There's all kinds of things you're going to complain about. Because you have more of, of an opportunity over there than here. We look at Mason, Tennessee, and I just covered that on our, the Black Congregation channel that we have. The sabotage. You're not going to be sabotaged over there when you're trying to build something. They want you to build something. They want you to provide jobs over there. They cool with that. In the in America, definitely in the West, these people will always seek to sabotage me and you. They, they hate us. I don't know. It's no, y'all tried everything you can for them to love you and it don't work. They hate me and you. And the, the interesting part is they hate me and you, but they won't, they don't want me and you connected over there. They want to enjoy Africa for themselves. That's what I got to see. This is why they tell you one minute they're telling you, well, go back to Africa. Now you're going, actually you're going to Africa. Now they try to say, it's not safe. It's not safe over there. Oh, it's not safe over there. You don't want to be there. And they tell you that while they get, while they get on the plane and they flying, they behind over there. The same place they told you is not safe. 
Johannesburg not safe. Woo, all that crime. Plane full of white folks going to Johannesburg. But I thought it wasn't safe. Man, them Africans, yeah, I'm with you. They don't like you. They don't like you. Why you want to go over there? Yeah, 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 I don't want to go over there. And where they at? They going over there. It's been a big finesse with white folks with us to tell us to stay away while they going. That is the biggest finesse. They've been. And, 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 and it's our fault because, once again, when you honor and validate white people's opinion like that about your own people, they can do that to you. Or they play the other game. Yeah, you better than them. You don't play third world. You don't be over there. This is the best place ever. And you better look at look at you. Look how much better you are than them. You don't want to be over there. You're in the greatest country in the planet Earth. And then they on the plane going over there to the place they told you that you don't want to be at because you're better in third world. <laughs> I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all. Kikoi Hayes, thank you very much. This is what these people. These people have been finessing black people. For a long time. Every nation got its problems. Every nation got its problems. But you know what? For me and what I saw, I rather, I rather deal with problems and I'm in the majority than dealing with problems and I'm in the minority. Dr. Claude Anderson, I covered this on the podcast. He told y'all way back then, you can't fight all these groups by yourself. You can't fight the white supremacists. You can't fight the Arabs that's coming in here that's weaponized against you by the white supremacists. You can't fight the Asians that's weaponized against you. You can't fight uh, uh, the Hispanic. You can't fight anybody else who has an issue. Sheriff Villanueva in Los Angeles, L.A. County Sheriff. He's Hispanic. The article he, they just reported on him, he sounds like a straight-up neo-Nazi. You can't fight all. You can't fight all these groups by yourself. You, it's not enough black people to fight them all. But we we fight. We did. Yes, we are fighters. Yes, but it's way more. We outnumbered in America. In the continent, we're not outnumbered. Now we got the advantage when we're there. And if you don't want to be there, you don't want to go see it yourself. I'm not talking to you. Why are you even in this conversation then? If that's the way you feel. Like I said, one person told me, I'm not going to North Africa. I, I, it's, I'll enjoy it. I said, okay, brother, enjoy America. Enjoy it. Don't go nowhere. I don't want you there. I want you to stay right here, but don't come complaining. When I'm, sit, I'm sitting here in, in South Africa, and I'm looking on a news report of a black man that's had the police, recording the police, grabbing him by the freaking throat. This, this, is, this is what I'm looking at from over there. And I'm like, this ain't no life for us to live, man. And the more one thing about that, I came back. I came back. I told my wife, I said, look, I'm sold on Johannesburg. I said, I'm sold. I said, we got to make a trip so you can go see it. Because she didn't go, you know, her and my kids didn't go. I said, but y'all got to go see it. I said, because you could easily transfer your business there and put up a, a cake shop and hire people, X, Y, Z. Do y'all know, listen, this is something else I was told. You know how in America we work so hard and we still don't make it a lot of times. We're so tired. We're trying to deal with our kids. We're trying to do everything. And it's just, you, you, you especially parents that got kids, you know, kids, dirty house. In, in, in South Africa, you know, I was told that for about 200 U.S. a month, you can hire house help that would help clean the house, wash the clothes, do everything like that, right? In America, you can't, you can't get that, 200 a month? You can't get that in America. You lucky to pay somebody to clean your house like that one day. And every day your house will be clean and, and, and clothes be washed or whatever. And I said at first to the sister, I said, man, that's kind of low. I mean, I would rather give money. Like, no, that's the price. Leave it alone. That's what it is. Now, they with you, you want to give them a raise, it's different. But no, that's cool. I said, okay. 
I say, well, I'm not trying to bug the system. I'm just, I'm just listening to all of this. I was told if you want to take the person and you want them to learn how to cook real good, you could put them in a cooking school for about, I think five, $600 for the, for the, for the six weeks, have them go pay for them to, you know, get there, learn. And then now they're cooking like a chef in your home. You can't get that in America like that unless you rich. So let's say, you know what? I want some, you know, I want to eat right. So let's say, look, I want to eat vegan. I want to eat vegetarian. I'm pescatarian. I'm this and that and the third. Food is inexpensive. Okay, well, look, let's go to grocery stores, get all the food to cook for the family. Now you get a home cooked meal and you don't even have to go to the restaurant. Or food is so cheap, you could go to the restaurant every day. True story I'm about to tell you. While in South Africa, we're talking about the food in the restaurant. There was me, Kellen, uh, Brother Sharif, it was Sister Davina, and Sister Fuzi. Uh, you know, she, uh, five people. Kellen, Davina, and Fuzi, they were always drinking. They were drinking. I, I counted maybe two or three drinks that they drunk. Now, you know, in America, drinks run you about 8 to $12. Nobody was drunk. It was just social drinking, right? I didn't buy anything. But after everybody ate their meal, okay, drinks, no problem. Appetizer. We talking about five grown people. Do you know how much the bill came out to in U.S. dollars? Y'all get ready for what I'm about to tell you. It came out to about a $111. For five people to eat, and those were drinking, one hundred and eleven dollars. Now, you know, one hundred eleven dollars in America, two people would eat, would have that, maybe minimum in some of these restaurants here. Y'all know that. You can literally eat out every day if you want. And you're not going to break the bank. So if you're a type of person that's a digital nomad, that's perfect for you because you're making your money already for working from home. You can go to South Africa if you want for 90 days while you're working, building your time. Let's say, you know what? I'm just going to stay over there. So then at the end of your 90 days, you leave the country for a day. Let's say you go to, oh, I want to go to Botswana. I want to go whatever, just see whatever for about a day or two. Come right back. Your 90 days start all over again while you're building your time and working to try to get a more permanent visa. You can keep resetting your time. Some people start off that way, resetting their time. Um, now I heard they're working on, you know, they're trying to fight for a digital nomad visa. Um, uh, there's ways to get your temporary residency, uh, permanent residency. You know me, I don't have to have citizenship for me. You can give me residency. I'm good. Right. But it's just inexpensive especially when you have the American dollar coming in. We are literally, like I said, they are breaking a lot of Americans right now. Look at the freaking gas prices. Look at the food. Even if you cook at home, let's say you don't go out to no restaurants, the food prices have shot up. It's like, for me, it's just a no brainer. Even when I went to Kenya, it was the same thing. Like the food prices is nowhere near the prices, Ethiopia even better, than it is here in the U.S. How are we so much better that I, you can't take five people out to eat for $111 in a decent restaurant? Yeah, you do the dollar menu, you can do that and just pay cheap. Okay, we're talking about a decent restaurant, a nice restaurant in a nice area. You know good and well you're not going to pay that. And those of you who like luxury, I was staying at the, at the uh, Marriott Melrose Arch right next door. They had the McLarens. Those of you who like the luxury, Porsche, Ashton Martin, all that right there. Man, Johannesburg got it. They got it. Oh, they got it for real. They doing it big in Johannesburg. And once again, the people are just nice. I remember even at the airport or our Tombo airport, the people were just, just nice. I had, when I started coming back and I went to Paris, people were just like, I said, Oh my God, 
Then we talk about that. When I left from Johannesburg to, to the, on the first leg of the flight with Air France, <sighs> boy, I was so aggravated. Them folks on that plane, oh my God, they act like savages. One of them putting his foot on on, on the uh, on the wall. He he got his feet look like look like big Neanderthal hammer toes. He putting it on these people wall. And then his little female doing the same thing. They bad feet on the wall. On the wall. Then you look up at the bathrooms that they have. And they lining up at the bathroom on the plane. Now, most people in America, they would say, hey, hey, you can't line up at the plane. You need to sit down and kind of wait your turn. No, they're all congregating in, in the plane. Then another one, after I finally went and used the restroom, another one of them. He just goes and help himself to the water. He go grabs the water off the, off the, the, the people stuff. He pours himself some water and he drinks it. And, and I started looking at him and he kind of looked up at me and then he'll pour more water. Like, like he was serving himself. And I just really kept looking at him like, what the hell? And then he looking at me like, what, what I'm doing wrong. I'm like, call the stewardess or whatever you would get you some freaking water. What are you doing? But well, these people, one thing I lo I've definitely paid attention to them. They, they live like there's no rules. They feel like they can be anywhere and everywhere they want to be. They don't have to conform to anything. It's amazing. It's amazing to sit back and really watch them. And then hey, I was missing South, South Africa so bad. Cause people, people are actually following the rules. People actually have some decorum. And I said, oh my God, why? Why I'm on this plane with these people? Jesus Christ, why me? I was just, and I looked at Brother Sharif, he, he says, Jesus, he's like savages. He said that, he said to see savages, I can't do it. Why, why can't they listen? Why are y'all so hard headed? Now the flight from uh, Paris to Atlanta, People had some common sense actually on that flight. And, and I called my wife. I told my wife, I said, I don't know what's up with these people. These people are so hard headed. She said, well, you know, you were going to France. Now, you know what they say about people in France, how they rude, how, how they don't have no decorum and all of that, you know? So that's what you probably saw on that flight. I said, oh, I said, never. I said, oh, I don't even want to fly Air France anymore. I was mad, y'all. I was mad. I'm telling you, I was mad because I was already sad that I had to leave. Okay. And, 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 and then I'm on a flight going back and I'm seeing, you know, just this, this crap. Uh, I tell you, I tell you. Oh, another story. I forgot to tell y'all about them not listening. So on the top of Table Mountain, people taking pictures. There's this rock. They, these folks got on the, sat on the edge with their kid on the edge. Now, any little wind or something happened, they going down the mountain. Oh, no. They sat on at the edge of the mountain to take a picture with their child. I'm like, what the hell are they doing? They could fall and, and, and all three of them, the baby, everybody could die. But no, they just smiling like... I was like, these people don't listen. Why? I said, let them do them. Let them do them. I, I, I guess I, I just, I just kind of lose it sometimes when I see people just being rebellious and they just have a habit of rebellion. They don't want to listen unless you really, really clamp down on them. And then they act like, why are you still treating me this way? You know, oh, I didn't see a dog everywhere. That's another thing, y'all. I didn't see a dog everywhere. I didn't see the, the you know what I'm saying? The, the dog I saw outside somewhere where they belong, but I didn't see a dog everywhere. Holding the dog, doing this with the dog. I get back, we in Atlanta, the Delta Sky Club Lounge, B Concourse. You had one of them. Now, they, now if you've been in there, they got all the food or whatever. One of them come in there, holding the dog in their hand while they sitting up here trying to serve themselves some food with the dog. And, and, and I'm like, 
I said, I'm back in America. Jesus Christ, I'm back in America. These dogs. The do it's a dog. Listen, I got a dog. I have a dog. I love my dog. I really do. But I don't bring my dog around food. Dogs drop hair. Dogs fart. Dogs do all kinds of things. They dog can have a flea. Dog can have a tick. We don't know what a dog got. And so we talked to the sister about it who, who's a supervisor. Shout out to the sister. And she said that, you know, if it's a service dog, there's nothing I can really do, even though they're doing that. She said, it's federal law. I said, really? He said, yeah, and I, some of them, I check if they dog is service dogs. They get all kinds of ways to get a service dog just to have the dog. I'm like, what the dog going to do? Well, why are you holding the dog while you're getting food? You couldn't put that dog on the ground at least with a leash. Karen, you got to have the dog. What is the sick obsession with a dog? I don't want no dog in my bed. That's an animal. I don't want that dog sitting at the table with me. I don't want that dog being around where people got to eat. That's a dog. And I said, my God, I, I just like put my head down, people. I put my head down. Them and a the dog. And then because they influenced some of y'all, some of y'all black folk then got that way by the dog too. Some black folk had sense at one point in time. Now you don't have no sense about that dog. You acting the same way like Karen and Brad. Because you don't have your own mind. Your people always had a mind. That dog is a dog and the dog stay in the dog place. Got the dog everywhere. Now y'all in South Africa, don't you know? Don't don't let don't let them folks bring them dogs everywhere. Y'all seen them in, in the proper place where a dog belongs. I'm cool with, with dogs, you know, running with their owners outside, walking them. That's cool, you know. But having a dog all in, no, no. I don't care how nice the dog is. It's still a dog. The dog pees and poops. That's a dog. It shouldn't be with people you're eating. But they got the dog so entwined in federal law. Was the sister was telling me the dog is entwined in federal law. But we know in America, the dog got more rights than black folk. We know that in America. They love them dogs. Oh, Lord, they love them dogs. Even in Ukraine, they, they, them dogs was on some trains escaping, but, but black folk left behind. The dog. I say, what is it with y'all and that freaking dog? Oh, you say, yeah, you say they got the dog in grocery cart. Yeah, they, they bring them dogs everywhere. You don't think that's like, not, I mean, come on. Those, because I know they're going to be watching. You don't think that's, that's, that's something wrong with you? That you got to bring a dog everywhere you go? You can't go to the freaking grocery store without the dog? You need some therapy. You attaching your whole self to a dog, an animal. Instead of attaching yourself to a human being, get you a woman, get you a man, something. Get some human interaction. Or is it because you're just that horrible that nobody want to fool with your behind, so you got to choose a dog? Maybe it's because of that. But yeah, 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 yeah. So, so. You know, like I said, <laughs> I just had to go on a tangent about the dog, ladies and gentlemen. I had to go on a tangent about the dog. Oh, them, them dogs. Lord, them dogs. They're obsessive with them dogs. But, you know, in America, dogs are federally protected more than black people, too, because under Trump, he signed a federal law where if you abuse a dog, uh, you can get federal charges, but you can do something to black people. You know, Biden and them signed the Asian bill. So, hey, they protected. Everybody protected more than black folk. But with, with that being said, with that being said, it was, it was a good trip. Now, let me get to the other part. Let me get to the other part. But I got to get to this part. This, this is very, very, very important that I do get to this part. Um, let's talk about apartheid real quick. Apartheid was horrible. Apartheid mirrored the Jim Crow South. 
I mean, from when I looked into it, it mirrored it. Blacks, blacks, blacks. Let me tell you something. I think apartheid in a way was a little worse at, than Jim Crow in, in a way because them folks had them on like a, a sun up to sundown thing. After sundown, you better not be out, period. We talked about sundown towns. We had our own areas or whatever, but if they were out and they caught them out, after you know the, the time period that black people are supposed to be in their house, white people can be wherever they want, but black black people are supposed to be in their house, they can get fined and go to jail and all this other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, how they were just you know killing black folk for no for no reason, um, stealing. From, I mean, it's just so much mirror. You know, some people say it didn't mirror what we get through. It yes, it did. Just go see it yourself. Oh, when I went to Robin Island and heard like, oh, oh, oh my God, let me get to that part. So I went to Robin Island where they, where they, uh, prison Nelson Mandela and they doing the tour. They had a brother that did the tour that actually were locked up there and how these white supremacists, how they was, you know, killing black people over there. They had a device and they showed the device, how they would tie black people up to this device and they would just basically beat them with whips, beat them with rubber from a tire. They'll do all kinds of things to these black people. When they put them in solitary confinement, they'll just starve them in solitary confinement. That's part of the punishment. Um, in the jail, they showed the, 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 the dinner. So if you were colored, they said colored slash Asiatic, they had one meal. And for the black folks, the Bantus, they say they had another meal. Now, if you were black, you got less sugar. You got no jelly or jam. Um, you got less meat. You got the worst of the worst. If you were colored and the history of the colors, you know, there, if you know that history or we, you know, the, the colors are basically a mixed race with, you know, the Dutch and also an African tribe. And a lot of them speak Afrikaans, which is the white language Afrikaans. Um, now some of them say, Hey, I'm black. I'm not no freaking colored. Some of them want to say they colored. In America, like I told one of them, you'd be called black. They ain't about to hear all that. You, you colored, you this. White folks will let you know real quick you come over here. And But the people that who were quote unquote colored, they were cool with me. They was cool. They, they called me brother and everything. So, hey, you, you call me brother, I'm good with you. Now, it was interesting though when I asked about colors, I ain't gonna lie, color black South Africans had this look like, like that. They all had that look like, man, I don't fool with, you know, some of them like that. So that's why I had to go find out what was going on myself with some of that. But, you know, I understand that what they explained to me, the colors in apartheid was used as a buffer class. So they treated the colors better than black people. That, that's what ended up happening. So after the apartheid was over with and the colors lost that buffer class position, okay, black folks just didn't, didn't forget about that. But the colors is actually in a bad position. I mean, with poverty and it's a whole lot of things with the colors that that's kind of messed up, you know, with them, especially a lot of them in Cape Town, um, you know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It just it, for me, you know, I'm taking it all in. I'm soaking it all in, right? I'm just soaking it in. But before I got into the, the you know the the color conversation, apartheid and the Jim Crow South and racism and, and white supremacy and the legacy of slavery. When we were, were let off the plantations and even getting out the civil rights movement. And when they had the government turned over to, you know, black people in 1994 at the end of apartheid, the same issue that they had, we have in America, they have over there in South Africa. Gotta be honest about that. Okay. When we so-called can go to the restaurant with the white folks and all of that, white folks always owned everything, had the money, had the wealth. They stole from us. They did all this stuff, stuff to get ahead, right? Well, we so-called equal here. We can go to the same restaurant, but we're not equal because they had this head start, right? South Africa, same thing. Okay, now you're equal with white folks, but you're still not equal financially. One thing that was said to me while I was over there, it just floored me. This is one thing that was said to me. Well, actually more than one, but this is the one thing. Well, 
Let's go over here because this is a black owned business. And I say, say that to me one more time. What did you just say? Or well, this is a black owned business. And I say, I'm sitting in dog on South Africa and y'all telling me about a black owned business like I'm in America. And I was just like, wow. And I'm just shook my head when, I, when I'm listening to this. But then I'm listening to all the stories about how it happened. How white folks was owning everything and black folks was here economically. And just as much as we have a wealth gap here, they got, they had it there. Now, what I told them was this sounds like y'all need reparations in South Africa, South Africans. I know some of you in the chat, listen to me, y'all need reparations to bring that true equality economically. We're trying to fight for reparations here because we could never compete against white folks being unequally yoked with the money. Y'all can get reparations a lot faster in my opinion than we can. Cause we behind enemy lines, black South Africans need reparations to heal the wounds that still there of apartheid in South Africa. What y'all need to do. And I know y'all got them get your scholars to say, okay, what is the wealth gap between the white population and black South Africans? And then once you figure that out, then you figure out your reparations number where all black South Africans get ran to equalize themselves with white South Africans there. And, 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 and reparations brothers and sisters in South Africa is ran. It's not education. It's not programs. It's not uh, some sort of set aside. Listen, you can give me that in addition to the RAND. Reparations is RAND. Okay. Cash payments, RAND payments in South Africa. Y'all need to start a reparations movement because what I heard you need it. This much as we need it here in America, you need it there so you can make things equal. How in the hell that these people got this head starting at a minority and the majority is, is still trying to catch up. No, y'all need reparations period. I even said that to an ANC politician I spoke to good brother. I said, black South Africans need reparations, brother. You and the ANC y'all need to start talking about that. The other brother, I think he was affiliated with the EFF. No, I didn't meet Malema. I would have to keep going. It would take time to do that. I can't go to the first trip. I said, listen, whether you ANC, EFF, I don't care. Only thing that I'm saying, because I'm not here to judge on that and get involved. Only thing I'm saying is this. Black South Africans need reparations. You brothers need to work together on that. Y'all may have different ideas, but y'all need to come together to South Black South Africans and say, listen, we may not agree on everything, but we do agree Black people need to move up economically. And so you need a reparations movement. So whoever want to start the movement in South Africa, do it. You need reparations. Y'all have the government. Now there's no reason why y'all should be on the streets talking about reparations and, and, and pushing politicians. You say, well, the politicians in this province is this. Okay. If the politicians no good, make sure you register to vote. Get somebody from the soil that's coming from the community that you know is going to do the right thing and put them in those positions and start talking about reparations. Reparations need to be a global movement for black people because black people enslaved here in America need reparations. Black people in the Caribbean need reparations. Black folks on the continent that was colonized, apartheid, everything else. They need reparations. In Cape Town, black folks can't even afford to buy the properties. But yet people from them Arabs from Qatar can come in there. White folks are coming there. Chinese are coming there. Why? Because it's income inequality and reparations would solve the problem. And even though I seen some of those issues that I saw and which saddened me, I still say it's better opportunity. It's peaceful for, you know, you can have peace. Crime is everywhere. Everybody know what a crime at. Most people do. 
I still say I'm more, I was more at peace in South Africa than here, even though there are problems, every country got their problems, but talking to those brothers and sisters, they, uh, I'm telling you, they understood me as a black American a lot more due to the apartheid system. I love my brothers and sisters in Kenya. Love them. They treated me so good. Love my brothers and sisters in Ethiopia. They treated me so good. But so for me, South Africans is the only ones that understand the racism, white supremacy and in the diabolical things it has done because they're still dealing with the remnants of it. They're just, they are what you call a new democracy. They haven't been in operation 200 years. They still trying to figure some things out. They're trying to figure some things out as, as a people. So I have to be honest about that and just tell that truth. Black people are, are dealing with the remnants of apartheid as much. We still dealing with the remnants of Jim Crow, the remnants of slavery. We still dealing with it. I think it's worse here because the system is still in operation here. Complete operation. I wish that everything was like done and we were just dealing with the remnants and income equality. And we just got to fix that because now we control the government. No, we literally in the thick of it still. The slave patrol is the police. Same thing. We still fighting an entity from slavery. The police come from slavery. Or people asking me about George Floyd and all the, all the police killings here. What's happened to our people? How they seen that on live TV. I tell my brothers and sisters in South Africa, you fight, you fight, you fight, you fight. Now, another thing that was brought up to my attention, and I want to speak on that just briefly, immigration. Brothers and sisters are saying, well, some immigrants are coming into the country and they're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. And I agree with them. Crime should not be, no matter who doing it, no. Drugs, no. No, no, no. Because if you allow drugs to come in, the white supremacists have always weaponized drugs to destroy a society and keep you high and distracted and whatever while they slip in and take you over. So you always want to stand up against drugs. Always. Some of them were telling me, well, we have an immigration problem like y'all have in America because people come in this country illegally. Some people, you know, want to leave their homeland and come here for a better life. In some instances, I can see why. I can see why. Y'all have a good infrastructure. Y'all have a good system in South Africa. They can make something of themselves. Some of the countries they come from, some of their leaders are not even paving the roads. When it rains, they get stuck in the mud. Y'all got good infrastructure. So I see why they come over there and say, oh, wow, I, I, man, I don't want to go back to that. Hell no. You know what I'm saying? So I do understand it. But at the same time, at the same time, I agree with them. You got to do things the right way. And it's the same thing we say in America. If you come, just come the right way. Follow the laws and come the right way. I'm not against people. I don't hate nobody. I don't advocate being violent toward nobody. I'm just saying that you, you, you have to understand where some of the brothers and sisters coming from in South Africa that wait a minute, the whole continent of Africa can't flood South Africa. It ain't enough resources to go around. Hell, you still got income inequality there, right? But, and they still dealing with, you know, some of the pain of apartheid. You know, I got to see, I listen, I recognize that pain when I see it, I recognize it. See, when you come from somewhere else and you didn't deal with that white supremacist like that, your mindset is totally different. And you got this hustle mentality in a way that maybe some people that are still dealing with some of that don't have just yet possibly. So some people that, you know, this is what I've heard being said. Some people say, Oh, what well, a black South Africans, they lazy. They don't want to do this. And we come in here. It's the same thing people say about black America. We lazy. We did. What you mean lazy? South Africa was built by, by uh, black people. Like, like the one guy told me 
The white man wasn't out there building anything. He was instructing black people to build it. The same thing here in America. The white man didn't work and build anything. He was just getting black people to build everything. What are you talking about? About lazy. They were lazy. South Africa wouldn't look the way it looked if people were lazy. Stop calling people lazy. Just be happy that you're there and that God has blessed you to get out your situation. Don't criticize nobody like that. If you don't understand nobody's story, ask the story. Some of you coming from countries, you didn't deal with that white supremacist like they dealt with them. These white supremacists were evil. What they would do to black people in that time period. Even when they did brothers and sisters in Namibia, the Germans too. How they, how they just was killing black folks in Namibia. They didn't want to come up with a small reparations payment in Namibia. Like, hell no. You owe more than that. Y'all Germans are killing us over here. It, it's a lot of those stories that haven't been told yet. Another thing, I don't, and I had somebody tell me this, why don't, why you don't go show the, 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 the townships? I do go to townships. I did go to one for sure. Um, this is what I will say. Y'all want to see, hold on, let me see something here. Y'all want to see. Some of y'all, y'all addicted to seeing poverty. So I'm supposed to take, take myself way to the way to South Africa to go act like a freaking colonizer. Ooh, I want to go to the shanty town area where people are struggling. I want to go film that. I want to go take pictures. I want to go do all that. You know what I was told by the driver? That's what white people do. That's what these Arabs have done go over there. They want to be, and then you know what happens to some of them? Some of these tour guys try to go inside of some of those areas and they, and they don't have a pass. And guess what happened? Them tourists getting robbed and, and the tour guide too. And I say, good, rob them. They don't belong over there. Why are you over there with your camera? Just like I told y'all, when I went to Kibera, I wanted to see it, but the only reason I filmed and we say, okay, the filming here, because we wanted to show the, the, the good things they were doing in there. I have a policy. I don't want to film black poverty. I don't want to film it. And for some of you to come around, well, you know, that's the real Africa. You colonize a minded Negro. That's where that come from. That's the real Africa. No, it's not. You sit up here talking about we come from Kings and Queens, but then you're going to tell me that's the real Africa. Well, showing all that nice luxury things in Africa. That's not, that's not the real Africa. That come from that colonizer. That's where it come from. How you gonna be a so-called king and queen don't have luxury? What are you talking about? I'm not gonna be part of any tour that do not take my people to show the good of Africa. I don't wanna do it. If you wanna go see some old downtrodden black people, go watch white people. They'll show you that all day long. I'm not doing it. That's a waste of my time. I don't wanna show poverty. For what? Why you want to exploit people? Was well, ooh, look how bad they live in. Ooh, I live better than them. Do you really live better than them? But an interesting fact about those people who build the little shanty town area in South Africa, if you build you a little shanty house on the land, now it's your land. You don't pay no taxes or no nothing. Another interesting thing I saw, everybody got satellite TV in the little shanty area. They built their houses and, and everything, and everybody got DSTV. So they watching, they watching, uh, which, which was my favorite channel when I was over there, they watching Mazanzi Magic. They watching that, that channel. I was enjoying that channel too. I was enjoying them shows over there. Oh man, I watched a couple of shows I really enjoyed. A couple of them. They watch, they watch and they ain't got to pay no property taxes. They ain't got to pay nothing. If they build them a little shanty area, they good. That ain't going to happen in America, now would it? That's not happening in America at all. America won't the property tax. They won't income tax. <laughs> America won't go, even if you bought the land yourself, you still got to pay America tax. 
You don't own anything in America. Well, I saw you say calling us lazy based on psychological warfare. It's only psychological warfare if you value the, the mindset of a white supremacist or anybody who's coming in trying to abuse you and call you lazy. Because this is how I feel about that lazy comment. What is it to you if I'm lazy? That actually should be a good thing for you if I'm lazy because that means I'm out of your way of you getting opportunity. But when somebody calls somebody else lazy, I just believe that's projecting. That's just projection. Yeah, in America, you're always paying taxes. You're paying property taxes for, think about it. You buy a home in America, okay? You paying property taxes. You got to pay your homeowner's insurance. In a lot of these neighborhoods, you got to pay homeowner association fees in a lot of these, you know, communities, right? You could lose your whole house if you don't pay that homeowner association fee, your whole house. You can lose your whole house if you're not paying your property taxes. Even if you, the house is paid off, you can lose your whole house. At least over there in the African continent, when you pay your, your, your stuff off and you're done with it, nobody asking you for nothing. It's yours. It is wicked what these people do. You buy a car. Let's think about it. You buy a car. They tell you, you pay taxes for the roads, but they could tell you driving is a privilege and we could take away your driving privilege for roads that you pay for. They tell, I mean, well, I agree with getting insurance on your car. I agree with that. So then and that's not bad because you need to, yeah, you need to have insurance, but they say your registration sticker. Well, if your car not registered every year, then, you know, you can't drive your car. You get a ticket or whatever. It's your car being inspected, I do agree with it because in South Africa, I saw this one dude riding on the road and smoke was going all out of his car. That's an emissions issue. So I do agree with the inspection part of your car. That's just a safety issue. But the driver's license, you got to have a driver's license or you can't drive on roads that you constantly pay for. They micromanage every freaking thing. Now, I'm not saying they don't have a driver's license in South Africa. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is we so micromanaged here in America. It's just crazy. It is crazy. They operate on this oppressive slave driver mentality. That's how they operate. Cause they know they don't know no other way to be. But with the, you said, hold on, paying taxes, what? And hounded for blood donations. <laughs> yeah, don't even get me started on the rest of that. Don't even get me started on the rest of that. Don't even get me started. Then South Africa has a good healthcare system too. The, the healthcare is pretty good. Matter of fact, it was South Africa that discovered the Omicron variant. The one that basically kind of ended the pandemic per se. They discovered it. But then Jim Crow Joe and them want to ban them because they discovered it. That was the one that everybody was catching. It wasn't as, as severe. And now people have herd immunity. They discovered it in South Africa. But you want to punish them for it because what, y'all didn't discover it? Whew. But with that being said, I know ooh, I've been talking a little while, definitely been talking a little while, but uh, thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining us on uh, the broadcast. We do have another tour coming up um, actually in November for Kenya. Um, this will be with uh, World Views. Um, it, it has been extended to, I think, 11, 12 days, more cities. Um, it's going to be pretty, it's going to be better. It'd be longer time in Nairobi, longer time on the beach and different things like that. Um, so you'll be seeing an ad about that. We'll get Kia to come back to discuss that, that tour. Um, you can, uh, make a deposit on that tour. Uh, we kind of been posting it a little bit on our social media. Uh, I'll make sure to kind of start putting that in the pinned comment. Uh, if you want to go on the Kenya tour in November, um, think about that. Uh, now, I don't want people saying, oh, well, I think, isn't that around the time of Thanksgiving? Do you say it's Thanksgiving to me? Of all things to say to me, it's Thanksgiving. Y'all need to go. Come. I'll say come one time. Whether it's South Africa, Kenya, whatever. Come one time. Come. At least go yourself, see it yourself. Some people's introduction to the continent was Kenya. Mine was Ethiopia. But come. 
come on this tour. Some people tell me I like to go to the continent, but I don't want to go by myself. I don't know. You know, okay. Well, you come with a group of people that's from the channel. You know, I even had a sister that came from the UK. So those of you in the UK, you can be a part of this too. Those of you in Canada, anywhere that you watch my programming, you can come. It's not just for us people. You in the Caribbean, no matter where you at watching, you can come. Even if you're in another African country, you can come. Everybody uh, definitely is welcome to come. Only thing I say is just bring a great spirit, a great attitude, you know, and, um, you know, enjoy yourself. You know, let go of, of, of America while you're there. And you'll discover some things about yourself and you'll be eating some good food. Because trust me, Kenya got good food too. Oh, yes, they do. They got some great food. And um, we definitely would like y'all to come on that, that next tour coming up. So we'll post a link to that. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again, once again, joining us. Um, I know I'm still jet lagged because I woke up at 2 a.m. And I've been up since 2 a.m. So I know I'm going to get sleepy here in a few hours. That's the bad part about being jet lagged. <laughs> because there was like seven hours ahead. So... Uh, but that's all right. That, that, that's part of it, right? That's part of it. Maybe, well, the Lord bless where well, it is going to happen that, that, like that. I'm not going to be jet lagged because, you know, when I transfer locations, right? So that, that's definitely in my plans for sure. Um, I don't want to be in Babylon when it sinks to the bottom. And I don't want a lot of you to be in that position. I want you to get your passports. Get your passports, get your passport, get your passports. There's no excuse for that. I told y'all since 2018 to get your passport. Get your kid's passport, okay? When you get your passport, go make an application for global entry. Your global entry give you also TSA pre-check. Get both of them. You sign up, pay your money, do your interview with the TSA, and you'll get your global entry card, okay? On top of that, get the Clear app. Get Clear, pay for Clear. When you fly domestic or even international, when it's def definitely domestic, you go to the clear, they take you all the way up to the front of the line, and you go through the TSA uh, pre-check at the front of the line. Don't matter what time you got to the airport, you go to the front. Beautiful thing to have. Please have that. Please have it. Um, I'm just trying to give you all some, just a few tips on, on things to travel, okay? So, like I said, we'll pu put the link for uh, Kenya in the pinned comment after this. Sign up, you know, for this particular tour. Um, put your deposit down. You got plenty of time for that. It'll be in November, so you can put the deposit and pay your payments. It's plenty of time, okay? So, you know, thank you for listening, ladies and gentlemen, and see you on the next one. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. If you like what you saw, please subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notifications button so you don't miss out on all things The Real South Africa. Thanks again.